phantasm? Is it a nightmare? Phantasm. Is it an illusion? You have to take me home. What? what? No questions. You must take me home. Phantasm. Is it alive? There was nobody driving. Whatever it is. If this one doesn't scare you, you're already dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Buried deep in the Pacific Northwest, one team in Springfield, Oregon, takes on the impossible, finding dead Mopar muscle and bringing it back from the grave. Award-winning master of Mopar, Mark Warman. His cousin, Doug. His daughter, Alyssa. His best friend, Royal. His painter, Will. And the rest of the GYC ghouls are restoring, resurrecting, and recreating some of the fastest, fiercest, and rarest muscle cars on the planet. This is Graveyard Cars. For those of you who have been fans of Graveyard Cars all these years since we started in 2012, you'll recall back in season three, we restored a 1971 CUDA 340 four-speed. This was a numbers matching car. Now the person that we sold the car to that wanted us to do the restoration on it loved Phantasm, much like myself. He asked, could we do a tribute to it? Maybe a tribute on steroids. So we made a deal to sell him the car, restore the car, make it appear in many, many ways as the car did in the original Phantasm. So for me, that's a no-brainer, right? You want to pay me to do something I love? It's absolutely the way I roll. So putting that car together was a dream come true. Without rehatching everything on the car, I just kind of want to catch everyone up to where we're at on the car. It received its body work, its primer work, all the lines were squared up, and then we went into the paint. We used single stage 9700 PPG paint on it. I actually did some of the work myself. You'll see me in there with the gun doing my magic, right? Probably one of the last times cars came out like glass. No offense, Will. But, you, know, you paint great, but I'm a great painter. <laughs> When it comes to the Phantasm Cuda, you know, I didn't do that car. Mark and I had a uh, falling out. We had parted ways. They went to his team that he had at that time, got it done. Mark and I resolved some underlining issues that we had that will never be on camera. You're fast. Oh, look at you. <laughs> look, look at, at you. Me. Yeah, big stretch mark. <laughs> we worked everything out and came back later. Great big 300 pound stretch mark. He was 200 pounds a year ago. <sighs> Now remember, this engine and transmission are numbers matching. They are original to the car. The only thing to point out is the car was originally tawny gold, which isn't my favorite color. So we wanted to paint it the black, that's why it's black. But the car itself is a pure numbers matching 344 speed car. Once the car made it through the paint shop, which was relatively easy because it was so solid. It didn't have rust panels on it. It basically dip it, do the body work, paint it, and move it into the assembly shop. Once we got it into the assembly shop, it's just a matter of putting it together, making sure we have all the parts and putting it together. So we moved it into our terrible little one bay stall that we had back at the old Wonder Bread store on Main, but that was our assembly shop at the time. Now, in case any of you folks are wondering at home why I'm rehatching old material, it isn't because we're out of fresh material by any means, it's Halloween. Another thing that had to be done in the car, of course, is the front and the rear suspension. Now, our 
process has changed over the years, even since we did that car. One funny common thread about it that hasn't changed is Dougie was actually there back then helping do it. You look, that is Dougie in that scene working on the front and the rear suspension. A lot of people don't know this, but I used to work for Mark back in the day when he first started Graveyard Cars. It's kind of funny, but I'm doing the same thing now that I did back then, removing, detailing, and reinstalling all the drivetrain for these cars. It's really cool to see how we did things then versus now. I see a total evolution in every step of the process. Now, once all the suspension was built out and ready to go into the car, the engine came back from the machine shop. It was really nice timing because we were on a short deadline and things went quick. And so we picked it up, brought it back to the shop, did all of the necessary bolt-on stuff so that we could do painting. And so what I opted to go with on this was the Hemi Orange, because orange and black make Halloween. Now, if it was an early car, it definitely would have been Hemi Orange on a 340. But mid-year, those engines started showing up as corporate blue. So that car was built in February of 1971. I could have gone either way. Why not go with orange, right? I love the orange and the black. I actually painted it myself, did the DP90 on it, sprayed it with the single stage EV2. We just take out the metallic, and voila, you got a painted 340. So once Mark was done painting the engine, then we could go ahead and put all the bolt-on stuff like the power steering, the alternator, and the other components and all the fasteners so that the engine's ready to go back in the car. Now again, just because we're building a tribute to a famous movie car doesn't mean you don't do it right from the standpoint of how it left the assembly line. This car got the sway bar. It was actually on it when it came apart. I look at that rear suspension now almost 10 years later and I can see a big mistake we made. We back then, we being I, thought that the backing plates were like a yellow chromate. They weren't yellow chromate, they were a natural metal finish. Tony showed me that, I didn't know. Even though this is a tribute car, I wanted to do all of the suspension markings, all the assembly line markings, because if somebody bought the car down the road, they might just want a really nice, correct black 71 Cuda. So I did do all the assembly line markings on the front suspension, rear suspension, transmission, engine, everything on the car is as it would have appeared in 1971 as an original 344 speed car. When Mark or Justin will go around a car and do all the assembly line markings, I have no clue what they mean. But I just, I love that attention to detail, even though it's a tribute, to go through and mark everything and label everything. Putting the little tags on the blinkers and the visors and the rear end. Absolutely one of my favorite parts of these cars. Once the drivetrain was done, we were ready to assemble it into the car. Now we had just at that time got our shop crane lift. I realized there was a weight capacity on it. I don't pay attention to that stuff. I do what I want to do. I wanted to lower that car down like the factory did, and we did. We lowered it down like we do now, but we use bin packs. In this case, we jigged up the front and rear bumper mounting areas and lowered the car down onto the suspension. We're gonna let it down now and roll it into the assembly room and get started on it. So what I did was I just cut everybody loose and said, rock and roll, we gotta get this thing done. Now, one of the liberties, as Tony D'Agostino would say, this car got were the billboard graphics. I installed those myself. They came out malissimo. And that goes back 10 years ago almost. Another option that we added to the car because the owner wanted it is the vinyl top. He thinks they look sexy. I think they look sexy with a vinyl top too, especially with rear window louvers and the car being all black. It really made it a quadruple black at that point. When it comes to the vinyl top, being a black car, black vinyl top, the billboards, the rear window louvers, which I don't like, and I don't like spoilers, but all those options really match well together. Here's an interesting little tidbit. If you ordered a car from the factory with the backlight louvers, the rear window louvers, it was mandatory to have a black reveal molding on the back glass. And they weren't just smooth, they were the same ones a Grand Coupe would have got. They were textured. The ones I put on the car were smooth because I didn't have a set of Grand Coupes laying around we could paint black. But that was factory mandatory. With window louvers, you got back glass reveal moldings in black. Back window louvers installed, 15 minutes. Would have took the idiots all day long. Now here we're getting close to the punchline, folks. I am not getting up and out again. I'm tired of it. Royal gets pumped. My favorite part of the entire process was while we were putting the car together, we had posted on the internet that we were doing some of this stuff. Well, be A certain gentleman reached out via a phone call to me and wanted to discuss the Phantasm Cuda. Miss Mark, how would, how would I know if you're doing an impersonation of him? <laughs> 
when I answered that phone, I did not think that was Don Coscarelli. I thought it was somebody pulling my leg, right? I thought somebody maybe saw the episode earlier when I did that to Josh. I don't know how many of you remember that. Some of my best impressions. Heard word of this, Josh. Uh, yeah, hey, how are you doing today? Heard word of this, Josh. Hey, how you doing today? It's old Bill Tanksley over here in Glenwood. You happen to have one of those double five-eighths, three-quarter inch mm -hmm. double platinum mm -hmm. chrome reverse Molly screwdrivers in stock, sir? Uh, how you doing there? Bill Schneedley here, American Sound and Light Plumbing Division. It turns out it was absolutely Don Coscarelli. It's nice to meet you. And he's a fan of the show, and he wanted to come up and check out the Phantasm car himself with the lead actor, A. Michael Baldwin. After all the hype and Don call, I had calmed down a little bit, and I went out and had a meeting with the guys, and I said, this is it. We are not going to disappoint this guy. Go to town. Get it wrapped up. We had all the parts. All we had to do was put the heart into it. There wasn't a whole lot on the final assembly. Darren, in a bid for attention, ended up putting all the shaker pieces together on it. Royal worked on the seats, the back seat, front seat, putting the seat belts in, stuff like that. I was working on small trinkets and things around the car. Josh was doing some cleanup in the background. But together as a team, even though it was kind of a dysfunctional team. Boy, no matter how many times you tell Josh, that's how he's going to do it, his way. God, why? Putting the seat belts in the wrong place, it's not the end of the world, but it takes 15 minutes to switch back out the other way. We were able to get that car put together and done in time. So it was time for Don and Michael Baldwin to show up. I was pretty excited because, I mean, I never dreamed as a kid that I'd meet the director of the movie that was one of my favorites. So I was nervous. You guys see it in the, in the video. I could not wait to meet and talk. Don's a huge Mopar fan, huge Mopar fan. A. Michael Baldwin, he fell in love with the Royals Poop Box 67 Green Coronet. I have no idea what he loves about that car. Some people like Dung. Now, something I was completely jealous about A. Michael Ball when, when he told the story, he was only like 13 when they started filming that movie. He was riding through the cemetery doing woolies on that little Hodaka road toad. I wanted a road toad so bad. I didn't get one because dad was dead, right? I was good slaughter in the knee, tumor in the foot, right? Problems, colorblind, things happening. Rick Brown beat the tar out of me every day. I had a rough upbringing. I didn't get it, but I got it now. Michael Baldwin ain't got on me. <laughs> Hodaka. After the meet and greet and after all the smoke cleared, we were able to present the 1971 CUDA 344 speed Phantasm tribute to the director and lead actor. I'm gonna say takes your breath it's away. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Wow. It's got the elastomeric bumpers. Uh -huh. The vinyl top real, really looks wow. sweet. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. The louver windows. Yeah. Got the wing. <laughs> this thing's beautiful. It is just <laughs> awesome. Wow. It really is awesome. You know, I've revealed a lot of cars to a lot of people. Even owners don't flip out as much as Dawn did. I really like that uh, black bubble. I That's, love the shaker. Yeah, but the black shaker is, is, is sweet. Oh, versus it's, like the Argent. Yeah, the yeah, Argent. It's, it's really, really sinister. All right, Don, I see several things about the car that are not at the tribute okay, I, level. I, I didn't want to bring that up. I think it was a Phantasm yeah. tribute car. We definitely changed some stuff, so I know the Phantasm hardcores out there who haven't seen this before are going to have fun. But I already know what the differences are. The vinyl top, the rear window louvers, the shaker. The Phantasm car didn't have that. One of the things the Phantasm car had that I couldn't bring myself to do was the flares on the quarter panels. That's a hard thing to undo. But Don had it done for the movie because back then, they were really popular. He also had Thornberry, the other lead actor's brother, do the gold leaf pinstriping. My client didn't want the pinstriping, I understand that. So yes, there were things on our car that weren't on the movie car, and there were things on the movie car that ours didn't have. So what, sue me. It's not exact. <laughs> yeah. It's not exact, yeah. no. We had Craigers, I, I think, right. on ours. Yes, you did. Yeah. You know, once all the newness wore off and they see the car and it's beautiful, they, they just become like everybody else, right? They start taking little shots at the tray. The Boy, pinstripe. The pinstripe's right. important. Oh, this isn't right. That, I know those aren't right, right? What about your shoes? And what's yep. with the clown shoes? You back the tray in a corner, I'm gonna come out swinging. That's how I do. This is like the Phantasm car on steroids, you know? Hey, the Phantasm car on steroids. I love what he said. 
It's the Phantasm car on steroids. Phantasm, man. Phantasm. If it doesn't scare you, you're already dead. <laughs> oh yeah, the sunroof. Because we had to pop out of the sunroof and shoot at the hearse. It was a factory sunroof? No, we just cut a hole in yeah. it and popped yeah. in an aftermarket. Oh, it wasn't a factory sunroof. You can sunroof. believe that. This is so cool for me to learn about the car. I had no idea that the sunroof was an afterthought. You know, oh, oh Don Coscarilla coming at me all hard and stuff about, oh, we should have gold leaf, it should have the flares, and where's the Craigers? I got a question for you, Mr. Continuity. Why is it when the Cuda pulls up to the little cantina, El Cantina, there ain't no sunroof in that car? And then later, when he jump up through the roof, shoots at the hearse with the shotgun, magically there's a sunroof. Now, how does that work? I don't remember anything in the episode when the brother took the car down and had a sunroof put in it. Maybe it's a magic sunroof. Maybe he got his sunroof from the same place Jack got his beanstalk beans from. <laughs> That's my cousin Vinny. Well, you know what? Let me throw it back to Michael. Let's go. Let's, let, let's show off your talents. Let's go. Can you drive? still drive this Love car? It. How cool is it that the lead actor, A. Michael Baldwin, who drove the 71 Cuda at 14 years old in the movie, don't tell anybody, came back to Graveyard Cars, what, 40 years later almost, and drove a 1971 quadruple black Cuda with a 340 and a four speed. What about the tray making some dreams come true? Dream Maker. So why everybody say something about the Dream Maker and nobody want to say nothing about the Dream Maker? Okay, is that confusing to you? I got another one for you. What would happen if Jim Morrison drove his van over to Van Morrison's gym? Michael is 14 years old again. <laughs> yes. I love this car. What about that question? And just one more inconsistency by Mr. Perfect, Mr. Past Judgment, Don Coscarelli. How about the 446 barrel emblems on the hood of a Cuda that had a 340 in it? Y'all didn't know that. That car wasn't no 446 barrel. That car was a 340. So you know, what about truth? What about speaking truth to power? What about not being in a glass house and throwing a chrome sphere? <laughs> you play on the throw rocks. You thinking what I'm thinking? Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. What about Mark? He'll be all right. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> what I'll do is I'll end up just uh, going inside and seeing if I can send him a quick email. Or... I think a lot of fans are gonna love this part. Don Coscarelli has the CUDA from Phantasm 2, and he has it from Phantasm 3. He called me recently and said, we gotta get together and do something on these cars. So in this soon, hopefully next season, you are gonna see the Phantasm 2 CUDA, the Phantasm 3 CUDA, Don Coscarelli, and A. Michael Baldwin back in the hood. All right, ghouls, going back to the Graveyard Cars vault. Previously, we restored this beautiful 1968 Dodge Charger RT. It is a 440 Magnum automatic transmission. The paint code is MM1. What name did Dodge have for MM1? Was it Copper Penny, Burnt Orange, Turbine Bronze? If you think you know the answer and you remember, shout it out. That way you can be embarrassed when you're wrong. Stay tuned after the break and I'll let you know how we did. All right, friends and fans, welcome back. You remember our beautiful little 1968 Dodge Charger, MM1? What color did Dodge call MM1? If you said burnt orange, you were wrong. Dead wrong. Burnt orange didn't come out until 1970. Happens to be my favorite color, of course. If you said copper penny, you're also wrong. I don't think Dodge had anything called a copper penny. I just made that up to stump you. This car is MM1 turbine bronze metallic. No vinyl top. The white bumblebee you see is standard. The wheel covers, standard. This car had a pearl white interior. And going down the road, it was a really stunning car. Okay, guys, so here it is. The reason we've caught you up on this CUDA is we did this, I think, almost a decade ago for the gentleman. Recently, I received a phone call from that same gentleman. He just lives up in Salem, about an hour from here, and wanted to know if I wanted to buy the car back. 
Hell yeah, I want to buy the car back. Within 24 hours, we had a cashier's check, Dougie in the passenger seat of the tow truck. <laughs> it's another story. And we were on our way to Salem to get the Cuda back. Going up to pick up a 1971 Cuda, 344 speed, Phantasm Tribute car from season three. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. What color? Phantasm Tribute car from season three. I've talked about this in the past on a road test with Dougie. He's crazy. Something's not right. His dogs ain't all barking. Something's wrong. We're driving up there. We're watching one of my favorites again, Night of the Living Dead. And I ask him a simple question. Ever seen Dawn of the Dead? Dawn of the Dead? Is that where they were in a motorhome out in the desert? All I wanted to talk about was the sequel to it, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead is the sequel to Night of the Living Dead. Where they're stuck in that mall with J.C. Penney's. Ken Foray is in it. He's a friend of mine. He doesn't even act like he's ever seen the movie. And we just talked about it a month ago when we went up to get the Blue Barracuda from the lady out in Harrisburg, wherever it was. And he goes into some crazy ass thing about a motorhome blowing up. And a motorhome blowing up? Hey, what are you talking about, man? They're zombies. So after a few more minutes of hearing his insane recital of bits and pieces of some movie that he's seen, I realize it's The Hills Have Eyes. There's a fire at the end with a motorhome. Everybody was yeah, running. The Hills Have Eyes. Okay. <laughs> it's a Hills Have Eyes. What in the world does a Hills Have Eyes, except it's an old scary movie, have in common with Dawn of the Dead or Night of the Living Dead? There was a Mopar in it. Big Bob, the dad, remember Big Bob? Big Bob drove that big Chrysler station wagon, it swerved to hit some kind of critter that ran out and then got stuffed into a ditch. And that's what broke the front axle so they couldn't get out and they had to spend the night in the hills. And then that uh, bird got ate. You know, and that's Hills. Dad's nice, got his hair cut, nice. Mom is in the passenger seat, probably going across the road, phone. And then there's Johnny One Ball, look at this guy. I know Mark says I'm crazy, but he's no picnic. He's always walking around coming up with the craziest things. I have no idea what he's talking about. I got a Toyota. Get out of my way. I'm faster than everybody. I have my red eye right now. I drive up into the bed of your truck and make you give me a ride. I don't understand, is there a problem? All I'm trying to do is have conversation, keep things moving along, keep the spirits up. Is it? You should just calm down. Oh, oh, I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! Johnny's dead? Finally, we made it to Salem. When we pulled in, got hold of the owner, he opened up the garage door, we backed up. Overall, it wasn't too hard to get the Phantasm Cuda out. There was another Cuda in the way that Mark had done previously for this guy. We just rolled it aside and rolled this car right out. There were a couple of things in the way. One of the things that was in the way of us getting the Phantasm Cuda out was another car that I did for the gentleman after I did the Phantasm car. And all we did on it was the body and paint. But that was a really neat 71 Cuda tribute car. Once we got the car out where we could get to it, we loaded the car right up and headed back to Springfield. Once we got the car back to the shop, it was terribly filthy. It didn't run. I knew it would run, but I knew the battery was dead and it was out of gas. So Doug took care of those two things, charged the battery up, put fuel in it, and it started right up. It just ran really rough. I know it's got foul plugs. I know the carburetor probably needs to be gone back through again. Want to check all the fluid levels. That's when I got Doug involved. Mark asked me to put a set of plugs in the 71 Phantasm Cuda today. For some reason, he decided that Alyssa needed to help me with this. I don't know why. Well, do you not want my help, Doug? Well, I, I'm very happy to have your help. I don't know why my dad called me, though, and really stressed on me coming to help you with this, because I know that you were perfectly capable of doing this on your own. I went and had a baby, so I've been at home, and my baby's seven months now, so that's where I've been. Wow. Now, the only reason I got Alyssa involved is she just had a beautiful baby girl. That's three of them, adorable. Capri, Brooklyn, and Emma. See, people think I don't know my granddaughter's names. She just had another child. She's pulled up in that house, you know, 24 hours a day, a little bit of going out, doing a workout here and there. She just needed to get out and socialize again. She's great in the show. She knows what she's doing, and she's a good little helper. There's no ulterior motive. The good news is my dad's not here, so let's get started. Let's OK, get this done. great. He's your dad. He's your cousin. So we're going to do a tune-up on this 71 Phantom Cuda. Phantasm Cuda. What's the difference? Come on, haven't you heard it like a million times? Sure. 
What's That's the all difference? my dad talks about. How are the spark plugs looking? Black. We'll put in new ones. You know, it was really cool um, that the director of Phantasm, Don Coscarelli, uh -huh. uh, he actually came and visited the shop. He really? watches the show. No kidding. Can you believe that? No. I didn't know that Don Coscarelli and A. Michael Baldwin had been here to see this car. I wish I could have been there to see that. That would have been so cool. That he didn't know about Don Coscarelli? He knew all about Don Coscarelli. I called him right after it happened and I told him. I said he finally showed up. He was involved in the build. You see? He needs a, a priest or a psychiatrist, one of the two. Dude, this one's fouled, so. Anyway. Uh, OK, how is it going Why don't you help there? me get this job done? I don't know why my dad had me come. You can do this on your own, really. Well, what else do you have to do? That's Nothing. more important. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no. OK, we're moving right along here. I got Good. one done. Is there anything we'll you want rub. me to do? I know uh, you can you, you do can, this on your own, but. You, you can check the oil for me. OK. Oh, you already got a rag. Yeah. How's the oil, Lisa? Um, it's really low. It's just right on the tip of the... No kidding. Barely there. See it? Um, Do you want to die, Dougie? Oh, <laughs> what the... Oh, my God. What the... All right, all right, I'll come clean. It really didn't have anything to do with getting Melissa out of the house and stuff. It's Halloween, man. Woogie woogie. <laughs> you know? Ooh. Scream. Yeah, Dad, nice. <laughs> That's your dad? Yep, I get it now. He got me, you guys. It's all part of this elaborate hoax so he can get us all to dress up for Halloween. Oh, yeah, because that's all I want to do. I want to spend thousands of dollars making a TV show for a 30-second punchline where everybody's in costumes. Come on, man. There's a lot of seriousness in my life, OK? Not everything's a running gag. What's your favorite scary movie? What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, Phantasm? Did, did you see the movie with this girl? What's your, what's your favorite scary it. movie? Uh, is that with the part where she answers the phone at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah Drew Barrymore with the, yeah. The red hair? That's what I meant. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You guys don't understand at home. You love it. This is why he does it. it feeds into it. I hate it. You try living with him for just one year. Then we'll talk about it. Talk about how great it is then, how funny it is then. Nothing Who changes. was the killer in Friday the 13th? Mark? I'll ask you. Who was the killer in Friday you the 13th? You do actually want you. us to answer you? No, I wasn't in the movie. Oh, I don't know the answer. How would I know? Do you remember this being in the movie? Yeah. This is from Scream. I know. Considerably years later. <laughs> OK, this one time when I was eight years old, he made me dress up as an Oscar Mayer wiener. Have you seen that costume? I had no choice, I was eight. And so he sent me out in the freaking wiener suit and the neighbor's dog, which is a German Shepherd, got off the leash and chased me down the street. Have you ever tried running in a wiener suit? That's a bunk mask too, Dad. It's creepy. Do you want to die, Sydney? My name's not Sydney. Nah. Oh my God. Play along for the movie. <laughs> We're not in the movie. <laughs> oh God. See why it's so hard to get anything done around here? Yes, yeah. yes, I do. Yeah. Well, I'm my glad God. you're here to help. Yeah, good thing I'm here to help. Yes. So as if it couldn't get any worse, my phone rings. Are you f and it's my dad. It's my dad. It's my dad. <clears throat> Should I answer it? Yeah, why not? Oh my god. Hello? Do you want to die, Sydney? <laughs> I'm not Sydney. What's your favorite scary movie? Night of the Living Dead. I think it's kind of funny. We love scary movies growing up, and we love them as kids. I don't think either one of us has grown up. I don't even know. Do I, do I just, do I have I to? I want to see what Dougie's insides look like. <laughs> Number seven in. You want to trade sides? Yeah. All right. OK, we'll get number two spark plug in here. And then a few minutes later, I get a call from my husband, Chris. So I answer it. Hey, babe. Who was the killer in Friday the 13th? <laughs> Dad, why? Why is your number coming up as Chris's number? Wrong answer. Your boyfriend dies. 
Look, I don't know how my dad did it. I don't, I know, well, I know he didn't just download an app and spoof it because he doesn't know how to do that stuff. So I don't know what he paid for someone to do this for him, but it just goes to show you how crazy he is and how far he'll go. You know, everybody want to be a vampire, nobody want to be a vampire. What about that question? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, mean. I bet you he spent money. That's my dad. Spend millions of dollars for a joke. So one night, Mark shows up at my house unexpectedly in the evening and stands at my front door in a gorilla costume. I don't even know who it is. He just stands there motionless. You talk about creepy. I think Alyssa's right. I think Mark is crazy. God. What does he, how does he even find time to do that? He never texts me back, okay? I'll text him, never text me back, but he can find a way to make his number, Chris's number on my phone. You know, it's a funny thing because I'll text my dad and I never hear back from him. I'll text him, hey dad, what's going on? I'll text him about work, don't hear anything. I'll text him happy birthday or happy Father's Day, nothing. Well, thank God we're almost done. So then I can yeah. leave. Christine's in the office watching the baby. And you know what? I just figured it out. I know exactly why he had me come today. Why? It's Halloween. Oh, no kidding. So right as Doug and I are starting to finish up, we have to put the last plugs in and then we're able to fire up the car. Guess who shows up with his last round of crazy? It's taking forever. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Dad, what? What now? What, what, what? Now what? I got your that? costumes. Costumes? That you're gonna wear for your lit interviews? I don't do Mark's silly crap. I'm down in the paint shop with my team, working, doing my thing. His tomfoolery can be meant for Doug and Alyssa. It sure as <laughs> has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I'm talking like I told you. Frankenstein. I told you. <laughs> oh my God. This is what I'm talking about. Frankenstein, he's my hero. I love this. We both hate fire. Why do you look happy about this? You look like it's a gift. It's not a gift. You have to wear this. Yeah, on you TV. think that's funny. You gotta wear this. Yeah, it's not. What? <laughs> what? What? This time around, he brings out an Elvira costume for me. And not only that, it's in a kid's size. It's a child's medium. I'm not wearing it. No, I'm not gonna wear it. You have to wear it. You're under contract. I don't have to. <laughs> See about the baby. Huh? You're gonna wear it. I mean, he can't make me wear it. I'm 30 years old. This contract, like, does he know what he can do with his contract? You can't make me wear it, right? I don't want to do it, Dad. I don't want to do the dress-up thing. I, I, come on. OK, OK. You guys have fun. You put on the Frankenstein mask, whatever you guys do. You're excited to wear that freaking costume. I like the mask. Did you see the mask? I like it. That's fine. You know, Alyssa's an adult. I respect whatever her decisions are. That's fine. She doesn't have to do it just to please me. You like the mask, you wear that mask, OK? But he's got another thing coming. If he thinks I'm sliding my into that child's medium Elvira costume, it's not happening. Because it's impossible, that's why. And because I don't want to. I guess at the end of the day, I'm getting paid. So, there's that. How are we doing this morning? Doing pretty good. 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 A little low right there where the holes are. That's normal. Yeah, looks good. Got up on there. Looks good. There. Looks good. Willie, how you doing, my man? And I thought I could avoid most of it. My toucan Sam, my can of Spam, my green eggs and ham. Look, I can't run this place by myself. If I could, I wouldn't have anybody out there. I gotta have some help, man. You'll see Dracula over there all by himself in Transylvania and stuff, chasing people down by himself. He's got minions that do that. Hey, did you diarrhea yourself from those oysters? I was born in California. Seafood my whole life. Oysters, I even had them pan fried. It didn't settle well. We'll have some raw oysters down at the coach It's the time of year. It's September. Yeah. See the picture of him and his, his beautiful wife and their gorgeous baby, right? They're all happy and smiling. You know, it's a photo op, right? And then he ate a bunch of raw oysters. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up diarrhea in himself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What do you <laughs> Nothing. I need oh. you to wash the Phantasm Cuda and polish it. 
and hand wax it. Can you take the mask off? It's going to be part of the season. It's like you don't, it's, it's the like Halloween you don't hear special. anything. I'm not taking the mask off. The mask is staying on until Halloween. OK. I'm yeah. going to hold you to that, then. Do you want to die, Will? <laughs> You don't want to say it from the movie, right, Billy I, Loomis? I, I don't know. I have no problem if he comes up and says, hey, I need X, Y, and Z done. No problem. It's all the unnecessary baggage that comes with it. If he would just come up and say, I need this car washed, waxed, polished, all that, no problem. I will die before you see me in a stupid <laughs> costume. Hey guys, let's test your graveyard car's memory. Previously, we restored this beautiful blue 1967 Plymouth GTX 426 Hemi for our friend Brett Torino. To or false, that car was a four-speed manual transmission. If you think you remember, stay tuned after the break. I'll let you know how you did. All right, folks, how did we do on that one? On Mr. Brett Torino's gorgeous 1967 Plymouth GTX. Was it a four-speed manual transmission? If you said true, you are absolutely right. This car is about as rare as they come. It's a blue car, white top, beautiful blue interior. It is a four-speed, 426 Hemi. You could not ask for more stuff on a car. I believe in my heart this is one of one ever built. When you drive it to a show, I promise there will not be another real version of this there. You know, I used to love Halloween. It was a great time in my life, but we're at the point now at 42 years old, Mark has ruined it. And not only he ruined it, Everybody else got nice costumes and all fancy stuff. And, and then he goes to like Discount Dave's and gets me a Wolfman look. So I, I just want to paint cars. <laughs> the problem is I started buying costumes. I bought mine first. <laughs> Pretty nice. Nothing a thousand dollars won't buy, right? And I bought Alyssa's Elvira, you know. She don't want to wear it, that's fine. I got Dougie Frankenstein, he looks great. You know, Will's kind of was one of those things where I waited a little bit too long. You know, I tried to find him a good costume. You know, it's just, uh, I think it's just basically was a little bit too close to Halloween, so. Yeah, it's August. Here comes all the phone calls. But let me tell you something. You never answer the first two. I used to answer the first one, and then he'd insult me, and I'd hang up. Then he calls back. Then he insults me, and I hang up. So standard rule of thumb, first three phone calls from Mark, no bueno. You gotta go quick, you don't want the soap to dry. Huh? Hood. And then my phone goes off. I look down and it's Heather. There's a little heart emoji. So of course I didn't want to answer that one. It's Heather, it's my girl. Hey babe. What's your favorite scary movie? What's your favorite scary movie? I'm, I'm not doing this. See, he doesn't just torture me. He tortures everybody. Nobody's safe from this maniac. All I'm trying to do is have a little bit of fun. This is our, what, 200th episode, who knows? Ain't nobody hurt Dracula for having some fun. He carried on and had fun with people. If you hang up on me, okay, you're like a <sighs> I don't know why everyone is so upset. This is great. Fire oh, 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 oh. Just when I thought it was safe to go outside.
I told you. You didn't believe me. He's lost his freaking mind. You know, I'm just trying to get a car washed with my son. And then here comes a little remote control Mopar something with the dog in it with a scream mask. You want to die like your mother did? I am making no apologies for the fact that this is my Halloween special, okay? I realize there's not much car work in it. I realize there was a lot of foolishness in it, but I'm Mark Warman, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Dracula, right? Bella Lugosi. <laughs> I think it was a wise man once said, I'd rather be at the bottom of a ladder I want to climb than halfway up one I don't. Okay, and that was Kermit the Frog, so. Okay, so you know what you want? Yeah, I'll go with uh, Eldorado and a Coke, please. Eldorado and a Coke. What? You know, so there's me and Doug in the Phantasm car, going to Finn's, have lunch. Eldorado burger and a Coke, and I'm What's gonna... your favorite scary movie? <sighs> Here he is again. It doesn't stop. What's your favorite scary movie? Do you want to die tonight? I love this stuff. Oh man, this is great. What is, what's with the look? What is happening? <sighs> this holiday. You know, I'd like to talk to the real Elvira sometime and find out if she had a lunatic for a dad. You give up? I give up. Look at this. Look at everything we're doing. I could have painted five cars by now. I'm done. You know, Mark's inside in the stupid mask, flirting with every waitress that works in there. And I have no idea who's even in Christine. It's great. Christine pulls in. We have no idea who's driving it. We can't see through the windows. And then she drives it out. At this point, it wouldn't surprise me if Mark's got Arnie in that car right now. All right, you guys, that's it. I guess my dad got his stupid little Halloween special. I hope everybody's happy. We all got to look like idiots. And uh, so happy Halloween, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Actually, I should be the one that says happy Halloween. That's, I was the one that came up with the idea for it. Right. So, uh, hey, Woofy. <laughs> Get in here, look at the camera right there. Frank. Wow. Get in here, Frankenstein. Tiny, time to answer. Hit the music. <laughs> <laughs> Dance! Do it! Dance! Do, do what? Dance! Or... Happy Halloween! From Graveyard Cars, it was my idea. So. Oh.